What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome to episode 9 of the Ultimate Rebuild Series where we are taking over the Tennessee Titans who had the undisputed worst record from the last episode. They have the number one overall pick. Uh, as we look at this roster, there's already instant disappointment because contracts, because we you know we had to deal with what the computer did. I thought we were going to have an excellent two-headed running back attack with Jonathan Taylor, who's one of the best running backs in college football right now at Wisconsin. And our freak monster created guy named Holloway, who's 91 overall at 24. I was like, all right, this is going to be lethal. But now he's set to hit free agency, which kind of sucks. Uh, look at the roster here that we're starting out with. Lots of old players who are new to most of you. Uh, Josh Allen is our, our current quarterback. Definitely need to look to improve upon that situation. Uh, as I stated here, we have a 91 overall running back with Jonathan Taylor, who is an 89. Obviously, here we have Corey Davis, who's 85. We have Wiggins. We have James Washington, who is a high pick from the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. Uh, tight end's not great. Offensive line's not bad. We have an 88 left tackle, uh, 82 right guard, 82 right tackle. So still want to build up that offensive line, but it's not too bad. Uh, defensive line, nothing special. Uh, I think all these guys are created. Uh, Jay Tufele is actually a current D tackle at USC that's projected to be a very high draft pick when he declares. We have Harold Landry who's still here. He's aging a little bit, 31 82, but still can get after the quarterback. We have Owen Popo, who's regarded as one of the top linebacker recruits in college football right now. He is 27. He is a 95 overall with a superstar dev. We still have Rashawn Evans, who was a first round pick from the Tennessee Titans, kicking around. Um, Dory Jackson's an 86. The rest of the secondary is, well, he's selected left. The rest of the cornerback room is not particularly strong. 81 free safety, that's not bad. A couple guys here at strong safety. All in all, this is going to be a tough roster rebuild, and I really do want to win a Super Bowl. I think we won two or three Super Bowls in the first season of the Ultimate Rebuilds, and right now we have basically one or two playoff appearances in three or four episodes, three episodes. So that's a little frustrating. We need to get back to that glory days of uh, the early episodes of the Ultimate Rebuild. So let's see what we can do here in free agency. So starting out with the free agency period, we have almost $60 million worth to start with. So uh, we're going to try to go in a little bit. So here on this wide receiver, it's just, there has to be something with the Dolphins and the Redskins. I don't know if it's a glitch. They always are bidding the most outrageous amount every offseason. Sometimes if you're the second place guy, you will be able to get them. So we're going here on this 2682 wide receiver. Uh, we need an upgrade here at outside linebacker. He's an 80, he's 27, he's a scheme fit. We got a nice receiving tight end as we have no tight ends on the roster. He's a 26 year old. Age is good. We got a 25 overall corner who actually has a you know confidence boost right now to an 80. So I'm very intrigued with that one. We got a defensive end that's you know a scheme fit as well. Even though it says he's 4'3, that's definitely a 3 4 end at 6'6, 300 pounds. And then we got a safety here that's just you know five years younger, six years younger than our current safety with the same grade. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can sign a lot of these guys. Now there's an interesting prospect here. I'm gonna gamble. I don't know what we've scouted so far, so I'm gonna gamble that we can hit on a QB because we could bring back Marcus Mariota. But I'm looking at this guy here, a Toshin. He's a 27 year old quarterback, superstar dev trait. And I was like, I could go after him, but I'm confident one of these goddamn drafts, with all these drafts that we're doing here in the rebuilds, I'm gonna finally get that free quarterback prospect that I've never been able to get at all here in Madden 18. Will this be the year? Probably not. We might have to roll with Josh Allen, but let's see if we can add these free agents. First and foremost, before we even get into the draft. Very nice. We're able to get all of the players outside of the wide receivers that the Washington Redskins build not bid $9 trillion on, but uh, we, de we drastically got better, especially on the defensive side of things. Draft time. I need you guys to see this. No bamboozle. Greatest draft class you'll probably ever see anyone have in Madden. So we'll have a quick recap here. 81, 79, 74, 79, 80, 76. You've got to be kidding me. High combine grade, 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 high combine grade. Just give me a second here. Linnell Weldon, number two overall talent, 81 superstar dev wide receiver. Second round. Crosby Thurman, supposed to go late first, slips to the second. 79, superstar dev. From Northern Illinois, 6'1", 196. Third round, 74 overall. C4, I've seen better drafts. A 74 overall, that's not that great. He had a 7'7 combine grade. Oh, superstar dev. Three. Three superstar dev trait players. And I didn't even get to scout, really. This was all computer-based scouting for whatever the Titans did this year. Fourth round. 
Jose McLean, 79 quick dev, defensive end. Not a scheme fit, doesn't matter. Moving the linebacker, probably will take an overall hit, but let's actually see what he's not. He's definitely not a 3-4 D end. So we'll make him a right outside linebacker. He will be a 3-4 pass rush. So he goes from a 79 to a 70K. 75 kind of sucks. Still gets a quick dev. Fifth round. Harris Gray, 80 overall linebacker, quick dev, highest combine grade, not rocket science people, every now and again, if you walk blindly into a draft, if you know what to look for, and it's just easy, cheese the combine grade, cheese the combine stats you need, you can have this. Oh, let me just for the sixth round, 76 tackle, yeah, nothing special about that, you can usually get high 70 tackles by drafting, you know, highest bench press. Oh, superstar! Oh my god, Jesus Christ, superstar, better be playing in the back row, that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four superstar draft players in a blind draft for the most part. Didn't get to cheese any of the prospect stories throughout the regular season. Didn't get to do any of that. This is, overall wise, I've had 380s. So it's not the best draft by base overall. I don't think I've ever had more than two superstars in one draft. I might have had three, never have had four. Sure. Getting a 74 superstar, yeah, you know, is he going to amount to anything? We don't know. I'll still take it. I'll still count it. If this was an episode of Draft Wars, I'd be laughing to the bank right now. Let's get into the season. So coming off a once-in-a-lifetime draft, I found out some more things about this team. First, I found out that, yes, we still have Josh Allen and 82 overall as our quarterback. Yes, it's probably going to be incredibly frustrating until we actually get a legitimate quarterback to be our starter. But, you know... We'll make it work. We'll find a way to make it work. We can run on the, the you know, the offensive line here. We, make, we move Curlew at the superstar tackle to center because might as well cheese some of that XP a little bit. I also found out the defense is actually in a 4-3. For whatever reason, throughout the times, the Titans, I guess, have switched to a 4-3. So we've moved Harold Landry to defensive end. We got Rashawn Evans here as outside linebacker. But the best thing I've noticed, not Thurman, our super, superstar second round draft pick that'll be starting. Or well, we're actually going to get Roland here to play nickel to get some cheese. Is that Joseph, the corner that we signed, has 27,000 XP sitting for us to go upgrade him. You know what you do. Here's what you do when you get an upgrade player like this. Oh, you go number dev. Oh, okay, we're going to get you that quick dev. Okay, we're going to bump your man up here a little bit. And we're going to bump your awareness up a little bit. And boom, now you're an 80 quick from a 78 normal. I don't know why sometimes coaches don't spend the XP. Not going to hate. Thank you very much, though. So our team is looking decent, still has some holes. We'll go as far as Josh Allen will take us, which is probably going to be like 7-9 and nine this year. At the midseason point, a quick look here at our free agents. Lofter needs to come back, 27-88. He's our franchise tackle. A Dory Jackson at the halfway point of the season. Yeah, he's 31. He also has six interceptions right now through seven games, so very much want to look at bringing him back on a one-year deal. Uh, and same goes for Jay Tufele. Uh, you know, 30-83, not going to develop a whole lot, but he still is a placeholding starter at D-Tackle for our roster. So we'll sign these guys up, still have a decent amount of cash to potentially make a move in free agency for a big name. So at the end of the first year of the rebuild, uh, even the best of draft it could not help this team. Again, we have to get our quarterback. Uh, we finished with a 7-9 record, so, you know, a better record than we had a year before. I think we had three wins, two wins. So, I mean, drastic change. Everyone should be happy with Jack Danielson and how well he's been coaching this team. But, you know, not good enough. And we're probably picking a spot that's going to be tough for us to draft a quarterback. Josh Allen on the year, 4,100 yards, 26 TDs, 11 picks. I mean, that's not that bad. But the fact that he's entering his 11th year, you know, he's probably not going to, you know, get much further. I think I called 7-9 at the beginning of the year, didn't I? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you know, we... We need to get someone else there. Running the ball, we got 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns here from Holloway, who's a really good player. Uh, receiving our third pick. We had the number one overall pick. That's another thing. People might say, hey, I thought you had C4. I thought you had the number one overall pick. I traded the Denver Broncos, so I have two first-round picks this year. So maybe we could trade up and draft a stud QB if need be. But we're very happy with the production we got from the number three overall pick, Laniel Weldon, who had 1,400 yards on 80 catches for 11 TDs. Outstanding season here, 26,000 XP to spend. Um, Corey Davis, 1,000 yards, 4 TDs. Wiggins did pretty decent. Tight end here did all right. Uh, on the defensive side here, actually, look at this. I actually remember I was peeking at this. 
with zero sacks by one, two, three of our starters. Didn't give up a single sack, which is awesome. On the defensive side, Popo led the team with 135 tackles, five tackles for loss, and three picks. 108 tackles from rookie Harris Gray and an interception. 100 tackles, four picks from Joseph, who we signed uh, via free agency. But look at this. Okay, we got no sacks whatsoever. Terrible getting after the quarterback. But nine interceptions from a Dore Jackson, plus two on the year. Still has 9,000 XP to spend. So a uh, little bit of a late bloomer here in Adore Jackson. We were able to re-sign on a one-year deal. Uh, four picks from Joseph, three from Papo. Um, taking a quick look here at the yearly awards. MVP went to Jake Fromm, who looks nothing. Jake Fromm looks 75 in that picture. Uh, but he won it here. Herbert, Mahomes. Oh, that sucks that Mahomes finally started to do good. I hate it. The teams start to do good once we leave them. Um, we had no one there. There's a Toshu, the guy we thought about signing, the superstar. He did well without us. That's fucking awesome. Uh, we are in the AFC, so I'm going to play the year from... I don't think we're going to see very many Tennessee Titans on these lists. Defensive Player of the Year, Wallace from the last rebuild is there. No Titans. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Hey, Weldon got it. Very nice. He already had the Superstar Dev, so he's not going to get any boost, which is kind of lame. On the Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Morgan Oboizer, the player that we traded down, or the I guess that the Broncos traded up to get. We had Gray who came at two, Thurman came at three, the safety... I'm happy with our rookies, man. I'm hope happy. We just need to get that quarterback situation sorted out. So going into free agency, we have a decent amount of money. Maybe you can splash on the guy or two. The Dolphins went 15-1. Good God. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have the 10th and 12th pick. Maybe we'll trade up for a QB. Who knows? Let's see. There's a QB I want. And the Redskins have the number one overall pick. So we're going to offer them 10. Walker Little, our starting right tackle, he's a 78, they needed one. And our right outside linebacker, McLean, who is 75 quick, I believe, at the outside linebacking spot for the number one overall pick. And it's accepted, so we now hold the perfect fit, the perfect pick. Let's get it. So looking towards free agency, we've never splashed this much money on one free agent yet, but we need to get better at getting after the quarterback. So Rashawn Gary... From Michigan, can play 3-4, can play 4-3, incredibly versatile. We need him. He's an absolute must. I'm going to give him 90. I'm going to bump this up to 90. So we're the clear, undisputed favorites to get him. 102 to 97. Come on, come to me over the Chiefs, baby. We need you, Grishon. Let's go. $90 million for a 30-year-old. Yeah, whatever. We needed it. Now let's go to the draft where we have the number one overall pick and 12th overall in the first round to get busy. Looking at our draft class, it wasn't the quarterback that I thought he was going to be, but still not a bad prospect. 81 quick, Kawhi Stark from Wisconsin, 6'5", 230. Uh, good throw power, 91 throw power, 90 short actually, 88 play action, which plays to the strength of us running it. Um, but again, I don't know, man. Someone actually tagged me on Twitter when I released my Madden roster saying, oh, look, my first poll, I got like an 86 superstar quarterback. I've never got them. I don't know how. Like, I, I know for the most part, in like 70% of the rebuilds, I never pick top five, so I'm never really going to get them by just luck of the draw. But still, man, even when I have a high pick, man, I'm not finding these QB prospects. Uh, with our second first round pick here, we got Keon Roth, the D tackle from uh, USC, 81 quick. So another good fit for our defensive front to add with Rashawn Gary. Uh, second round, we get a 77 center slow dev, however, but we definitely needed an instant starter at center. Uh, we got a 77 right guard with normal dev here in Bozier. Best pick of the draft maybe in value in the fourth round. We got Nate Meek, 79 quick, running back out of Temple. Uh, good speedster there. Nice little compliment to what we already have. Uh, and we kind of not gonna lie, we kind of flopped on the last couple of picks. I mean, it is good to get all 70s here in the sixth and seventh round. Uh, but we pretty much had two wide receivers on the roster. And we gambled our biggest investment of the wide receiver spot on a 69 a uh, wide receiver that wasn't particularly fast. I thought the speed was misleading, but he actually is just not fast at all. Uh, then we got another guy that wasn't particularly fast, but, you know, you're not going to hit on all your drafts. But, uh, you know, the top hat, the top side is good, and we debatably have three starters. Probably nice rotation here with Meeks at running back. So it could be a lot worse, but, again, tail of the tape is we're still, for me personally, in the Madden 18 season, I've never been able to get that 85-plus superstar QB. Someday, though. Alright, so we are going to 
Year number two of the three-year rebuild with the Tennessee Titans. Now we have a new quarterback, which always sets you back a little bit. So uh, we're pretty much building towards going all in for a Super Bowl or bust type scenario in year three. But Sark will be our starter. Holloway's a 91. Uh, Weldon, we still got to spend all his XP, I guess. Let's do that real quick. We'll just let the computer take care of that. I was going to say, why hasn't Weldon gone up? He's an 84, but he's like one of the best rookie seasons I've seen for my wide receiver. He should have went up a little bit because I forgot to spend the XP. When you get up there and age a little bit, uh, you know, you kind of forget a little bit. So what we are seeing here now with the updated roster is uh, he's an 87. So there you go. He's an 87. We got Wiggins, 81. You know, Corey Davis retired, which kind of sucks. Uh, offensive line. Outside, really, the center spot, we're looking good. We have lots of youth on this offensive line. No one's under over 30, I don't think, yet. Uh, tight ends a work in progress. On the defensive side of things, we obviously added Rashawn Gary, 92. That is a huge get. Adore Jackson coming up, nine interceptions. Uh, D tackles looking better. Our second or our second first round pick, Rock, will be starting. Uh, we still got old man Harold Landry there. Secondary is young and upcoming. Linebacker will be probably the best linebacker in the game at Popo. Um, yeah, no, like I said, this I'm not expecting much this season. This year's gonna be more so, you know, get your XP, develop the team so that we can go all, all in in year number three. But we could surprise us and start could go off offensive rookie of the year type performance and we can creep into the wild card. Let's see what happens. All right, so at the midseason point, two and five. You might have a nice pick, I guess, to uh, to look at uh, for our third and final year. Uh, look at that free agency, though. In-house, we need to spend a lot of money. Holloway needs to come back. Coffee needs to come back. Adore Jackson needs to come back. Um, the rest can the rest can go. The rest can just they be completely honest with you. We can wipe our hands with them. And at the end of year number two. Jake Fromm wins another, the seven-year-old Jake Fromm. Well, he's not seven. He looks like a 45-year-old Jake Fromm. Wins the MVP for this back-to-back -back years. We have found ourselves on the playoff line bottom in the south once again with a 6-10 and 10 record. So we're worse off than we were with Josh Allen at quarterback. We had seven wins last year. 6-10 uh, and 10 right now. So where does that put us for the picks? We pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we pick top 10 pick. All right. Look at the stats of our rookie quarterback. We always knew this year was going to be a little bit rough. Uh, Kawhi Starks, 4,300 yards, 27 TDs, 14 picks. That's yeah, I'll take that for a rookie. Uh, running the ball, Shane and Holloway, 1,200 yards, 11 TDs. Oh, and by the way, thought it would be better for him to test out the free agency market. So we're going to be franchise tagging him very much. Uh, receiving with 89 catches, 1,100 yards, 7 TDs from Weldon, 766 and 4 from Wiggins, 1,280 and 6 from Julius Griffin. 703 from our tight end McCann. On the defensive side, we got 154 tackles, three picks from Popo, 148 tackles from Baldwin, 104 from Crosby Thurman, as well as four interceptions. We got seven sacks from Keon Roth from the D tackle spot. Man, this guy has been one of the best edge, not edge, just best pass rushers from D tackle. I think I've drafted in quite some time. He's pretty much Jarrell Casey if Jarrell Casey was playing in a 4 3 front. Uh, we got six sacks here from Hale Landry. We got seven picks from Adore Jackson, who has been on fire for us since we've been in town. Look at that. Nine picks last year. He's just flourishing under head coach Jack Danielson. Tell you that for, for goddamn free. No receipt. We got four picks from third and three from Popo. So good turnovers in the secondary. Quickly at the yearly awards MVP went to Jake from Lamar Jackson's there, Darnold, and so on and so forth. Uh, the NFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Jake from No Titans. Defensive Player of the Year went to Randall Wallace from the Chiefs. No one. Deep offensive Rookie of the Year. There we go. Went to Kawhi Stark. I think he had Quick Dev. So did they give a Superstar? We didn't see that. I don't think he did. Julius Griffin, our wide receiver, coming in number three. Meeks, the back of running back, at number seven. Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Morgan Nelson for the Raiders with Roth coming in at number two. That's excellent. Seven sacks from a D tackle as a rookie. You're looking like a franchise player, bruh. But we did not make the playoffs, but as I stated at the beginning of the year, I fully feel like this is going to be a team that's going to be making a push for year number two. Uh, Starks only an 83 overall, though, so that's that's nothing too drastic. Um, but I think you know, he has a superstar dev trait, so that'll definitely help out. Uh, but might be a little too little too late. But that offensive line is looking mean now with three A's on it. We have a franchise wide receiver. We look at weaknesses. We, we, you know, the tight end and second corner, probably. That's that's about it. 
Anyways, let's jump into the offseason. Maybe we can land a couple stud free agents as we make our final push for playoff glory. In free agency, after applying the tag to a running back, as that little news story is saying, we have $30 million, which I'm looking at bringing in two players, one a veteran, one a youngster. So we're looking at bringing in Sidney Jones, 86 overall. He's at the end of his career. He still has that superstar depth trait. We've seen the production that Dory Jackson has brought us. I feel like Jones can do that. And then we got here an outside linebacker, which... Based on where we draft, I'm still really looking at my team right now. I need another wide receiver. I need a defensive end and an outside linebacker. If we don't land City Jones, I don't need a corner. Uh, so based on what we could draft, Hewitt is more you know, suited to be a, a defensive end in our scheme. So, uh, we, you know, depending on wherever we go, depending on how we draft, he can either be a linebacker or a DN. So he kind of gets two birds stoned at once. So hopefully we can land both these guys. Well, we got Sidney Jones. We didn't get the other defensive end. So what I did was I signed Jadavion Clowney, who is near the end of his ropes. He's a 36, but, you know, he was, I think, an 82 overall outside linebacker. Sliding there at the end, 83. We're looking good. And in our final draft class, we have our worst draft class. The same, you know, good scouting. Got me some good players. The same. Guessing on high combine grades and intangibles that you can tell. Did not! So in the first round, we got a 77 overall wide receiver, normal dev, Douglas Gaston from Wisconsin. Uh, good size, good height, weight, speed. In the second round, I thought this guy was going to be a home run, just in case we couldn't long-term resign that running back. Terrible from Liberty. Then third round, we got a 78 slow dev right guard. So the overall is great. The dev is killer. Fourth round, 69 wide receiver. Fifth round, 71 corner. We get a 72 kicker in the 7. So right now, this is looking like one of my worst drafts ever. But we are able to bring it back here with a 77 superstar linebacker here, which we are going to make him a left outside linebacker, which is going to negatively affect his grade for sure. But we'll make him this little run stopper there. Perfect check, so he's going to fall from a 77. Actually go up to a 78, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, exactly what we needed. So all in all, bad draft class. I know, I'm human. I can have a bad draft class just like any of you guys can have a bad draft class. But here we are, Super Bowl or bust time, third and final year, desperate to make the playoffs with the Tennessee Titans. Super Bowl or bust time for the Tennessee Titans as we are in the penultimate episode of Season 2 of the Ultimate Rebuilds. And uh, our teams, and, you know, it's, it's definitely much better than what it was when we came here. Is it good enough to go to the Super Bowl? I don't know yet. Our quarterback's up to an 85 here in Stark. Running back, 95 for Holloway. We got 85 fullback. Wide receivers are 88, 79, and 77. Our rookie will be starting in the slot, uh, which is odd because Griffin was our statistically best receiver. Had 1,200 yards last year. Just did not want to develop at all. Even though he's quick. To oh, that's probably what happened. I auto spent the XP and I bought him the dev trait and didn't boost up any of his stats. Phenomenal. Uh, we got McCain here. Who is a 81 McCann? We'll go McCann. That's what it looks like from North Texas. Mean Green. 88 left tackle, 91 left guard, 83 center, 90 right guard, 86 right tackle. So the offensive line is fire. We got Clowney at defensive end. Aging veteran should still be able to get up to the quarterback. Gary, 89 monster. Keon Roth off a rookie year, 88 already. This guy is going to be an absolute monster for us right now, long term, for long after we're gone. Uh, we got 86, nice little D-tackle pairing. Go with the rookie at outside linebacker. Popo's up to a 95. 87 for Harris Gray. Second day, we got Adore Jackson and Sidney Jones lead the front with Sinalu Joseph. It's definitely not his name, Joseph. Yeah. Joseph sounds better. The whole name sounds better. Sounds like he's from, like, the island, the Caribbean or something like that. Uh, that's a good secondary. All 80s. Uh, 81 free safety and 86 strong safety. So ultimately, I feel confident. I feel confident that we could probably squeak into the playoffs and then I get to run this show from uh, the big dog roll, the Papa Bear roll in the Super Sim. We'll win a Super Bowl here for the Tennessee Titans. Let's go! Look at that, first round by coach of the year for Jack Danielson. Okay. 12 and four. We won the AFC South, is that the number one record in the league? Look at that. From, from we took over when they were last place, now they're first place. And we're, gonna, we're just gonna show you that, no, we, only, we always, unless it's a Chip Kelly rebuild or a stream, you want a clean ship here, look at that. All authentic victories. Because in reality, when I lose, it's probably more entertaining when I lose. But when we do win, it is absolutely awesome. So let's look at our stats here real quick. Uh, Kawhi Stark, 3,900 passing yards, 30 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. That is really good for a second-year player. I'll take that every day of the week. 
Right of the ball, we got 1,600 yards and 12 TDs from Holloway, 11 touchdowns from Meeks. Receiving, we got 90 catches, 787 and 4 from Wiggins. Just sharing the love here. No receiver over 1,000 yards. Gasset, a rookie, uh, led the team with 938 yards and 10 touchdowns. On the defensive side, Popo led the team with 128 tackles, 4 picks, 117 tackles here from Baldwin. Not a lot of sacks to talk about. Roth led the team with 3.5, 11 tackles for loss. We got five picks from Sidney Jones will be signed by a free agency away from the Philadelphia Eagles. Four picks for Popo. Oh. Looks like Adore Jackson did not play particularly well with Sidney Jones in the lineup, but our record speaks for itself. Looking at the yearly awards, MVP went to Spencer Rattler. That is a fake player. With Holloway coming in at number 10. Uh, I believe you saw Coach of the Year went to Jack Danielson. Offensive Player of the Year went to Trevor Lawrence. Holloway coming in at number 3. Defensive Player of the Year went to Tyrone Pollock. Yeah, not a real person with Popo coming in at number three. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Let's find out who we're playing in the playoffs. <clears throat> All right, here we go in our playoff game against the New England Patriots. It's not your dad's New England Patriots, but they're still a pretty damn good New England Patriots team. I just can't bring myself to controlling a team the entirety of a game. But I will come in on clutch third downs where the Sim is clearly going to try to, you know, work us over here. So in third and inches, clearly we're not going to... They already have two turnovers, but clearly we're not going to run it with our 99 overall running back. Psych. Uh, I'm not going to play with the Titans and not use the Raiders jerseys. Or not the Raiders, but the uh, Houston Oilers jerseys. Because we pretty much have the second coming of an Earl Campbell in terms of a prolific running back. As we're able to punch it in there and get the touchdown. I don't really feel like playing defense right now, to be completely honest with you. So we'll just keep coming in sparingly on the offensive side of the ball. Titans are actually a franchise, the more and more you think of it, have had a history of good running backs. CJ 2K, Earl Tom, like if you, you know, oh, right there. Come on, tight end. There we go. Muhammad Ali's white son makes a catch there. Ah, there we go. Come on, punch it in. Third down of the red zone, third and nine. Um, we'll go screen pass. I know our, our running back has like 80 catching, so he should be able to uh, make some plays here. Holloway. Oh, might work. We get good blocking. 66 gets his block, and then for some reason, the juke into the end zone does not work. But uh, we'll let them punch it in. Wow, we turned it over? You didn't give me the opportunity to finish off that drive on the one, and it's like, nah, we're going to let them turn it over here. You better make up men's there. There we go. We're able to tie it up and take the lead and get an instant touchdown to open the second half. I'm feeling really confident right now. We get two touchdowns early in the second half. To go up 28 13. There we go. This is going to get us over the hump. You would assume the Patriots aren't going to have any Tom Brady, you know, regen theatrics here. Come on, finish it. There we go. 42 is enough. As we move past the Louisville Patriots, 42 to 21 on the day. Kawhi Stark, 303 yards, four touchdowns. Oh my God. So we had 300 yards, four touchdowns, and a pick. And Holloway had 195 yards in a TD. And Jonathan Taylor creeped his ugly head back up again. As he was on our team when we started. 146 yards, 2 TDs. But not enough on the day as we're moving on to the AFC Division. AFC Divisional round. Take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't. I always feel like this is kind of a rivalry, but not really at the same time. Just because they're you know, historic franchises in the AFC that have been there for quite some time. So wrote up the, the game 14-7 for the good guys. As we are moving the ball up and down the field here on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We miss a field goal, which is definitely disappointing. Could come back to bite us in the ass. Let's hope that's not the case. But we are actually we'll stepping right now. We're using the, the current Titans uniform. I'm not going to lie. I think they're one of the ugliest uniforms in the league. I don't know why they, you know, I, I get they still have to pay homage to the Oilers with the light blue. But I just don't like the dark blue and the light blue on this. To be completely honest with you. If we're going to have some fashion files here and just critique what they're wearing. As we're able to connect on a touchdown right away to let them know that we're not messing around when we're Papa Bear. And we're coming in sporadically to finish off drives to help this damn Titans team move the ball. But now at 31-14, we are just scoring in the playoffs here. Let's see if we can just average 40 points a game. That'd be awesome. Pittsburgh Steelers, they're probably, I don't even think they'd have anyone left. Le'Veon Bell, maybe? But probably not. Well, let's finish this. Finish the damn game off. 34 the 21, the Titans are moving on to the AFC Championship game. Kawhi Stark, 200 yards, 2 TDs, 168 yards from Holloway. When push comes to shove, man, the Super Sim is all about the running backs. And they don't want to let me on Bell. They have Trevor Lawrence as a quarterback. Forget about that. But, uh, yeah. 
Holloway's a monster, man. That's almost 300, that's over 300 total yards in two playoff games. Now, a game away to the Super Bowl. Oh, shit. I actually lied. Uh, that was the AFC Championship game. I forgot we had a first round bye. Should have paid attention to the 12 more record. But here we go. We're in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl Arizona taking on the 10 and 6. New Orleans Saints. Let's get a quick scouting report here of who the Saints have. Are they have any players we've heard of? Probably. Nah, maybe. They might still have someone. The Saints, they got, uh, oh god, Jarrett Stidham at QB from Auburn. Okay, they have Blake Boyles on the roster as well. Uh, okay, no one there. No one. Antoine Randall, they have a 99 tight end named Marcos Randall L. Okay. Uh, oh my god, 98. How many 90s are these guys going to have? I'm not seeing a lot of familiar faces, if you know what I mean. We got Ned Flanders kid. Is that Roquan? Roquan Smith still there, veteran president linebacker, Denzel Ward, Darnay Holmes. If you watch the UCLA NCAA rebuild, you'd be familiar with who he is. Uh, Marcus Williams still trying to make amends for what happened in that Minnesota Vikings game, the miracle of Minnesota. They have Tanner Muse from uh, Clemson, a talented safety. All right, they still got some good players, but ultimately, their 99 tight end is not going to be able to compete with what we possess, and that is a 99 overall running back. Name Shannon Holloway, baby. Let's get it. Let's win a Super Bowl. Super Bowl time. Saints. They ain't. They ain't. They didn't want none of this. All right. They. They got. They settled for a field goal, and we just got a turnover in the red zone. Okay, that's awesome. We're holding them to field goals here, and then we get the touchdown just like that, and takes the lead. They've dominated this game, but we're able to punch it in for when it matters. Come on, big field goal. Second quarter. I might as well come in. I'm the best field goal kicker on YouTube. We got to get some gameplay here in the Super Bowl. I'm going to come in. I'm going to nail it from 38 yards. They're going to they're gonna call a timeout. So, uh, actually, I'm going to bitch out of this one because I hate that camera. We miss it! We miss it. All right, come on. Third down alert. Big field goal. Here we go. Here's my moment to shine, baby. 42 yards to take the lead. Boom. Boom. I have no idea what our kicker's rating is, to be honest with you. I don't pay attention to special teams. But this like that, we take a 10-9 lead. And what is probably an utterly boring... Super Bowl. Kyle Juszczyk's brother is our kicker. AJ Juszczyk. Come on. Oh, there they go. There's the first touchdown of the game. Third down alert. We are going to come in on third and ten. We've balanced offense. 25 passes. 25 rushing attempts. But we got Weldon is our main man on the outside. We got a tight end wide open in the middle. You might have a 99 tight end, but you don't have a tight end that's wide open as that. That is a, that is a, a tight end that's been as wide open as a special... Niche porn markets. There we go. We're able to get the equalizer. Tied up at 17. The Saints are charging. They're able to get the touchdown there. Are they going to let us pop back in? Red zone. There we go. Better believe I'm going to finish this off. Probably could have let the computer score on this one. And look at this. The first time we actually pop into a game, there's not a whole lot of time left, and it doesn't chew the clock off right away. Oh, my God. How did you drop? Come on. you got to bring that in. That was a perfect pass into double coverage. We let him just the right amount. All right, second and 10 on the 15-yard line. We're going again with the, if you didn't notice, the Oilers throwbacks because those are the best goddamn jerseys. Not only, like, am I, maybe I was shitting on, oh, my God, he ditched the sack. He walks right into his sack, which is actually a gain of one. Okay. Whatever. We're in four-down territory anyways. A gain of one. It's positive. Some positive yards. It's much better than eating a sack for, like, a loss of five. So, we'll corner strike. Not as overpowered as it was in Madden 17, but we'll see. Again, um... Kind of limited with our options here. Who wants it? Is that a first down? That should be a first down, right? Of course, it's going to hit us fourth and one. It's fourth and one. We are going right up the middle. We have a 99 overall. Mother truck and running back. He can get one yard. Our offensive line, the interior, they're all 90s. If we don't make this, this is the strength of the team. We don't make this, it was never meant to be. Because this is this is how we're supposed to do this. And we didn't make it, because of course. Because of course Madden has that weird animation where like forever for whatever reason your guy is like he hits a wall. It's not like he battles and moves forward, he hits a wall. That was frustrating as shit. And we lost the Super Bowl. I hate that. That's one of the worst animations. I hope to God Madden 19 fixed the animation. Like 90% of the maybe no, maybe in hundred percent of the time. On those fourth down conversions, you hit a wall. There's no give. There's no... It feels like it doesn't take any of your players' attributes into effect. It's that linebacker hits you slightly behind the line of scrimmage, so you're going to fall behind like you just got fucking hit by a wall. 
Fuck! I hate that shit, man. So we, uh, we made it to the Super Bowl, I guess, in three years with the Titans from the worst team in the league to the best record, and made it to the Super Bowl where we lost by, I'm not going to say it was all out Madden cheese, because it was a pretty competitive game, but uh, I, I hate that animation, man. It's a, it's a big time gripe. But uh, let's pop out and find out if there's a unanimous winner for the series finale here of Season 2 of the Ultimate Rebuild. So to cap off what was still a disappointing end to the most success we've had in Season 2, we actually have an outright finale here. In the, because uh, like I said, we do five, we do five episodes, five teams, and then we move on and we reset so that you guys can see familiar players. So for the fifth and final episode of season two, we have the one fourteen and one Rams. That's embarrassing. That is not a good record whatsoever. And actually, now that I think about it, I should have just kept retiring my coach and moving on. I don't know if I'd be able to pick the team right away, but it definitely sucks having to buy the same packages over and over again. I said packages. That's a sex joke. Uh, but look, we had they Sam Ellinger at quarterback from the University of Texas. Uh, you guys probably have seen the Texas uh, NCAA rebuild, so we would have found out a lot about Sam Ellinger. But, you know, he clearly is at the end of his career and not developing very much. Cream Hunt's the running back. Uh, okay. They got uh, Jason Killings and veteran wide receiver. All these guys are pretty old. Coley Parkinson, tight end from Stanford. I more so just want to see real plays that they still have. Cream Hunt. Uh, the offensive line. They got Eric McCoy from Texas. He is a real player. They have... None of those guys. Dion Hammer, probably the worst name ever. Manning, Shunning. Uh, John Johnson's still there. Grant Delpit, safety from LSU. Uh, this guy, I was actually going to try to draft him once. Sean Acho. Acho. Bless you. Ha! Great jokes. But, uh, yeah, they look like a pretty terrible team. So that is what we're going to be doing here in the finale. I hope you guys will come back and check that one out as we take over the LA Rams to try to do something. But... Still, uh, sucks that we weren't able to win the Super Bowl with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, and, and I mean, the, I don't want to go this entire season without winning a Super Bowl with one of the teams that were taken over for an ultimate rebuild. So it's all in the Rams, baby. All or nothing. Luckily enough, probably for the better part of the last five drafts we've had, five episodes worth of drafts, we've been dominating the NFL draft. We got four superstars in one draft here. That, that definitely needs to carry over for us to have any success with the Rams. But that is for another episode. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. If you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.